Thanks. Can you hear me? All right. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I want to start out right away by saying that I am not here to sell you on remote work. <laughs> I, I do work remotely, and I enjoy it, and it works for me. Um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. What I am here to talk about is how remote companies have gotten really good at solving certain collaboration-related problems, and that co-located companies can learn from some of these tools and processes that remote companies have dialed. Um, and make their workplaces more collaborative and inclusive for everybody. Um, so real quick, I want to do a show of hands. Um, how many of you work in a non-traditional office environment, remote? OK, cool. And how many of you regularly work with somebody who's not in the office? And how many of you have missed something, like missed the memo, because you've been traveling or out of the office? That should, that should be. Like a lot of us, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, even though you probably go into an office every day, um, chances are you work with remote people, and at some point, no, that's okay. <laughs> and at some point, we're all remote. Um, so thinking about how remote and asynchronous teams. <laughs> oh, it might. It might just be me. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, so thinking about how remote and asynchronous teams collaborate, um, despite not always being face-to-face, -face, and applying those solutions to all kinds of workplaces can help foster better communication and belonging everywhere. So as Michelle said, thank you, Michelle, I work at Help Scout, um, which is a fully distributed company. We currently have 81 team members, I think, in 50 cities around the world, um, and my my teammates on the content team, there we are, super pixelated. Um, uh, there's me in Oakland, there's a strategist in Vancouver, Canada, there's another one in uh, just outside Sydney, Australia, and then we collaborate heavily with the design team who's spread out across Australia, North America, and Ireland. Um, and then before I was at Help Scout, I was at Basecamp, um, which as some of you may know, uh, makes a collaboration tool. Um, and they're also a remote company. In fact, they wrote that book about remote work. <laughs> and it's where I became a remote work enthusiast. Um, there are a number of advantages to remote work, and I don't want to spend too much time on them. Um, but I do want to address them just because the way things are heading, we're going to see a lot more non-traditional working arrangements, not just remote work, but flexible schedules, um, communicating across cultures and time zones and that kind of thing. And even if you work in an office every day, the things I'm talking about are increasingly relevant to all kinds of teams. So to me, and again, just really quickly, the main advantages of remote work are, number one, uninterrupted blocks of time, like the other Emily was saying. Like, uh, I, it's, it's easier to find flow um, and carve out big chunks of time to do work that requires that deep focus when you're remote. You get access to a broader talent pool. Um, you can recruit from pretty much anywhere. And that is one of the best perks that you can give your team, is, is working with great people. And then it's not universal, but quality of life can be greater uh, when you give people the freedom and flexibility to work from wherever they choose. Um, in the eight years I've been remote, I've lived in Austin, Texas, and in Costa Rica, and now here, and I've traveled a bunch. And it never once occurred to me to ask permission if I could travel somewhere or move. Um, and that's a huge privilege. And I also don't have to commute, which is nice. And I don't get to listen to as many podcasts, but that's you know a trade-off. Um, so <laughs> those are the main advantages to me for working remotely. But like every setup, uh, it's got its pros and cons. And the downsides of remote work aren't really what a lot of companies who are afraid of it think it's going to be. Um, they, they, they think it might be like, well, how can I make sure people are working if I can't see them? What if my people are spending all day on social media and that kind of thing? Whereas in actuality, um, it's shown that uh, productivity stays about the same or maybe increases just a little bit when people are working outside traditional office settings. The real downsides to remote work are really just amplified versions of problems that exist in co-located environments. Um, but co-located companies don't have to solve for them because it's easier not to. Um, you can just wing a lot of decision making when you're all in an office together, like hop in a conference room um, and make a decision right now. 
But since remote companies don't have that luxury, they've been forced to solve for a lot of these problems um, at, and, and collaboration challenges. So I want to take a look at each of these in a little more detail because these issues affect every team who has to collaborate in ways other than sitting across from one another at the conference table. Um, and I'll talk about how we address each of these issues at Help Scout. So the first one, text-first communication can lead to breakdowns in understanding and productivity. I am pretty sure that a lot of us in this room have had at least one email thread or, or Slack thread where things just like spun out of control because people were coming at it from different angles and like didn't have the same context and kind of started arguing and then you start um, like not assuming best intentions once you feel like someone has questioned your integrity. Um, and, and that that feels really bad. Um, and, and that can happen more often in places where face-to-face um, -face communication isn't the norm. And at least at first, it's tricky to pinpoint the image, or pinpoint where um, it's, it would be best to just like call time out and, and stop and, and walk away. Um, the instinct is to react and to reply and to dig in only more often that makes the problem worse. Um, and things can get blown out of proportion because we think so much faster than we type. Um, the way around that is to recognize that it's happening in the moment. And either hop on a video chat um, where you have the benefits of tone of voice and a little bit of body language, um, or to walk away and pick it up later when your emotions are getting in the way of clear communication. Um, but when your default communication is email or messaging, you are prone to missing out on that additional context that tone of voice and body language can convey. Um, and at Help Scout, we, we uh, acknowledge this by encouraging people to assume miscommunication over malice. That's a phrase we actually include in our new employee onboarding. We tell new folks that, um, you know, if, if, if they feel like their integrity is ever being questioned, that um, just, just to assume that it's a communication misfire and not because their colleague actually thinks that they're stupid and wrong. Um, and this applies when you're working across cultures, too. Um, some folks in other countries like to rib us Americans for saying everything is awesome, <laughs> which is totally fair. <laughs> um, but it helps to understand that not everybody has that same baseline and that when people are offering concerns or feedback, um, sharing that kind of thing, um, it, it's often informed culturally and it's rarely personal. And honestly, um, that's probably a huge part of why diverse teams have been shown to work better together because it's not just a homogenous group of people patting each other on the back, telling each other that everything is awesome, um, which is how you wind up with like health apps that don't include period trackers and that kind of thing. Um, so the second advantage, the second disadvantage of remote work is that remote teams require more proactive communication structure and transparency. Um, when you're collaborating asynchronously, it can create a situation where one stakeholder is constantly waiting for the other one with longer periods in, bet in between where work is just sitting there. Um, and that can exacerbate any us versus them dynamics that might already exist on teams. And the way around that is to just have super rock solid processes in place. Like on my team, uh, for instance, we have a really robust editorial process. It's not just like slap something up on WordPress and call it good. Once I'm good with a draft, it goes to our copy editor, then it comes back to me, then it goes to design, then they uh, code it up in Git and put it up on staging. I review it there. There's usually a little bit more back and forth, and then we can ship. Um, and we have to have these really solid tools and processes in place just so we can ship things on time. Uh, Non-traditional arrangements like this are not less work. You can't just set it and forget it. You have to aggressively document everything. Um, at Help Scout, our stack is like, uh, we, we have, well, we dog food our, uh, our own knowledge base called docs. We put everything in there. We use Confluence. We use Slack. We're in Slack all day. We use Trello for project management. We have a ton of Dropbox paper and Google Docs. We should probably be using Spoke <laughs> for all those things. Um, and then we also use Zoom for a lot of video meetings. Um, we, we do our team meetings in Zoom. Our CEO has a 
all hands every couple weeks, um, and that's recorded so that people who aren't there um, can can hear it later. Um, and you know, if they can't attend because it's two a.m. their time, they can they can watch it. And honestly, I think that's a great way to keep entire co-located companies aligned as well. Record your meetings so whoever can't be there in person for whatever reason uh, doesn't get left out of the loop. It's a, just a solid practice to get in the habit of. And finally, the third disadvantage of remote work, I think, is that it can just be really isolating. Um, it's not for everyone, and that, that goes for people and companies. Uh, not, not every company is situated to be remote, and people aren't either. I know that when we have made hiring mistakes, it's often because um, somebody feels like uh, they, they, they want to try working remotely, but then they try it, and it's like they get cabin fever, especially when they're, the majority of their team is in a different time zone. Um, and it just, it just doesn't work, and, and that's fine. Um, personally, I know that if anything is ever going to make me go back to an office, it's that sometimes I feel like I kind of forget how to have conversations with other adult professionals. <laughs> um, and uh, so I come to stuff like this, and I go to conferences, and I try to get my fill of inspiration before I go back to my little desk and put my head down and do the work. But it does, you know, it does make me wonder, like, what, what I'm missing out on, not having those, like, constant water cooler moments throughout the day with my super smart colleagues. Um, and at Help Scout, we try to mitigate some of those things with uh, semi-annual retreats. Uh, we're about to go on one in a couple weeks here. Um, and we, again, just a lot of video. Uh, we, in addition to all the team meetings we run via Zoom, we also, we replaced our uh, recurring stand-ups with a weekly Monday video that um, the People Ops team records and shares with the whole team. And uh, it's just like, birthdays and anniversaries, product updates, like other stuff that everybody in the company needs to know about, and they're usually funny and fun, um, and they boost morale. And we do another thing called troop talks, where they're just casual monthly video chats, where the whole team is invited, and it's set around a certain topic. We've talked about self-care, we've talked about like a song that's connected to a poignant memory, um, all kinds of things. And people just share these lovely stories that you might never otherwise here in a work context. And it's, it's really lovely. And then uh, Fika, we do, uh, which is inspired by the Swedish tradition of uh, taking a little break to have coffee and pastries and chat with a friend. We use a Slack app called Donut to randomly pair us. And then you end up talking with somebody on a different team about whatever, life, your, your family, your pets, where you grew up. I just had an amazing Fika with our design team lead about how diet culture sucks, <laughs> and um, it was great. And I think everybody should Fika, like remote or not. It's a, it's a lovely little tradition. Um, obviously, co-located teams don't struggle with these things as much. There are a lot more opportunities for organic team building built in when you're all in the same place. Um, but what I think good remote companies do really well is offer a lot of different ways uh, for team members to build relationships. Um, you don't have to do everything. You know, we, we, you don't have to do the FICA. You don't have to do the kayak excursion on the retreat. Um, we just offer a lot of different options, um, and people can pick and choose what they want. Um, and that's somewhere I think that co-located companies can sometimes do a better job. You know, like happy hours, for example, um, they're great, but they can feel kind of um, exclusive to people with families or non-drinkers and that kind of thing. So if you're doing those, like maybe make sure you're also doing like team breakfasts or um, offsites at lunch or lunch and learns and that kind of thing. Um, just so that inclusive company culture becomes the default. Because inclusivity benefits everybody. And the problems remote workers have, like feeling out of the loop and unclear documentation and all of those kinds of things, those happen in every office. Um, so maybe you can start video recording your meetings, for example, or at least taking better notes so that people who weren't in the room um, still have access to that information and they don't feel like second-class citizens. Default open, right? Yeah. So um, for those of you who are interested into going deeper into how our design team specifically collaborates across time zones, my teammate Buzz just published a great post about how he approaches it living in Australia when the rest of the team is in North America and Europe. Um, and I've put a link up there, so you can go read that if you are interested. And um, 
I love talking about this stuff, would love to talk with you more about it. Happy to chat anytime, answer any questions, and of course, learn from you as well. Thank you so much for your time.